Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Jung from Bluefish Pediatrics, and I'm here to talk to you today about solid food feeding for your baby. And this is an exciting time, so let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to stress is that there are many acceptable methods in terms of how to feed your child solid foods. There are over 200 different countries in the world, and everyone does things differently, and all the kids come out great. So please know that there is no one best way of doing things. So today, rather than give you an exact way of feeding solid foods, I'd rather just give you some general tips and guidelines that will help you to come up with the best way to feed your child solid foods. So the first thing to know is that there is a general timeline that these kids follow. And you will know that your child is ready for, for solid food feeding when around four to six months of age, they can sit with support, they have good head control, and they no longer have their extrusion reflex where they are sticking their tongue out of their mouth repeatedly and pushing the food out. When you meet these three criteria, you know your baby is ready to start solid food. And by six to eight months, you wanna make sure that your baby is eating a wide variety of foods. They should be eating meats and fruits and veggies and cereal, and we'll get into that in just a second. But variety is key to make sure that they get a nutritious, well-balanced diet. And as they uh, improve their solid food feeding, you wanna make sure that you thicken the food so that they get better at eating solid food. And you should expect gagging. There is a learning curve with all of this, and it may take them several times before they're able to eat without gagging. And gagging shouldn't scare you. As long as you're not giving choking hazards, it is safe to continue to give them the food, and they will need to learn how to overcome their gag reflex as they eat their solid food. And for those of you who are interested in doing the popular baby-led wean weaning, I think this is an excellent way to start solid food, and you can start that around six to eight months, and that is simply where you start with real foods rather than using pureed foods, which babies at six to eight months should be able to do. Around eight to 10 months, you can then be, start, uh, be giving your child finger foods where they should be able to pick up foods with their pincer grasp and eat things on their own. And at that point, you can also start giving them finely chopped foods, things that you guys are eating. The more foods that you give that you are eating, the more nutritious it can be for them. And also you can make dinner time and lunchtime a social time for the family. And then by eight to 10 months of age, ideally your child should be eating three solid food meals a day. And the more solid foods they eat, the better. And finally, by nine to 12 months, they should be self-feeding, where they should be able to grab things on their own, start putting things in their mouth. It may be messy, but this is all part of the learning process. And again, I wanna stress that they should be eating what you are eating. Don't be a short order cook. Don't be doing things on the side for them. If they refuse to eat what you eat, then they can wait until the next meal time. You wanna teach them early on that you're going to make one meal and whatever you offer is what is offered and there's no other food. And this will help prevent the ch children from becoming picky. And you want them to learn to eat what you eat and if you model healthy eating for them, your child will also become a healthy e eater. And very important, you wanna be careful of any choking hazards from an early age. The big things that will choke your children are round fleshy foods and round hard candies. Those types of foods can get easily lodged in your windpipe and cause choking. And so when you do give round fleshy foods, it's much better, for example, like a grape or a hot dog, to cut that into quarters to make sure that it cannot get lodged in their throat. And round hard candies, those types of foods, you just want to avoid until they're older, ideally five years or older. So how do you know uh, how much food to give? As a general rule of thumb, after you start solid foods, you wanna see the amount of solid foods increasing over time and the amount of breast milk and formula decreasing over time. There is a misconception out there that breast milk and formula are better for children. That is not true. The reason why we give breast milk and formula is that it is a bridge to get to the point where they are able to eat solid foods. A well-balanced solid food diet is much more nutritious and healthy for the baby than simply giving breast milk and formula. So what we wanna see is a decrease in the breast milk and formula and you want to see an increase in their solid food. And if you think about it, what is breast milk? It's whatever mom is eating, her nutritious diet, which is packaged into breast milk, and that's what you're feeding to the baby. Why not go directly to the source and give them the same foods that mom is eating rather than doing it through the breast milk process? And that's why we want to move them towards the solid foods as soon as possible. And so as they get older, you want to see the amount of solid foods increasing over time. And by the time they're a year old, they really should be taking no more than 
7 ounces to 24 ounces of breast milk or formula. And the majority of their diet should be solid food. So I want to stress again that milk should be secondary and solid food should be their primary source of nutrition as they get older and older. Now the different types of food groups that you can give, meats and proteins I think are the most nutritious. They carry the most minerals and vitamins, so that is generally where experts now recommend you start. And you can give them soft foods which are finely cut and pureed. As a rule of thumb, if you can put the food in between your fingers and you can crush it with your fingers, then your baby should be able to handle it with their gums, even if they have no teeth. And then following the meats and proteins, you can give them fruits and veggies, which can be cooked and mashed, or you can buy jar baby foods, or you can give them soft fruits and veggies, such as avocados, or you can give them bananas. And again, things that you can put in between your fingers and you can crush easily with your fingers, they should be able to handle. And then finally, you can give them cereals, breads and starches, and you can mix these cereals with either breast milk or formula, and you can start off doing a half teaspoon of the cereal with one ounce of formula or breast milk, and then you wanna thicken that as it is tolerated. Now the order of the food groups I don't think is that important. I do think starting with meats and then going to fruits and veggies and then cereals last is probably the ideal way to do that. But if you want to start with the fruits and veggies or you want to start with the cereals, I don't think that's a, that is a problem at all. As long as by six to eight months you have them on all the different food groups and they're eating a wide variety of foods, that is probably the most important thing. The order of the foods is not that important. So one of the questions that parents always ask us is, are our kids getting enough to eat? And generally, as a rule of thumb, your children will get enough to eat. It's very rare that in pediatrics we see children not gaining weight appropriately. But some of the ways that you know that they're getting enough to eat and that will give you peace of mind are on this list right here. First of all, be assured that your child has a survival instinct. They will eat because they are hungry and they will make sure that they get the calories that they need. And a good phrase to live by is you are in charge of the quality of the food and the baby is in charge of the quantity of the food. As long as you hold up your end of the bargain and you're giving them high quality food, I can pretty much guarantee that your child will eat and get all the nutrition that they need. So let them handle the quantity of the food. And if you're ever wondering if they're eating enough, you can always take them into the pediatrician's office and get their height and weight graphed out on their growth curve. And if their growth curve looks good, you know they're growing fine, they must be eating fine. And just one little tip, usually they're gonna double their weight by four months of age, and they're gonna triple their weight by 12 months of age, which means that the rate of weight gain is gonna be higher in the first four months of age, and after four months, the rate of weight gain tends to slow down for the next eight months. So if you see a little bit of a decline in terms of how fast they're gaining weight, and perhaps even how much they're eating, do not be worried as long again as their growth curve looks good, you know your baby is fine. And if you're wondering if your child is eating enough, look at their energy level. If they are babbling and they're playing and they're rolling around and crawling and once they start walking, they're zooming around the house and you see high energy level, you know that they're getting all the fuel that they need. And another way of looking at how much they're eating and if it's sufficient is their hydration. If their mouth is moist and their skin turgor is good and they're peeing every six hours and you know they are well hydrated, then you know they're being well fed. And I would urge you, rather than think of diet in daily snapshots, because there may be a bad day here and there, but if you look at their last seven days, the last week, did they eat enough? Did they get the meats? Did they get their fruits and veggies? Did they get their cereal? Over the course of the week, that's all going to the same place. So rather than focus on one, one day, and if you have a bad day, don't get too worried, but look at the week as a whole, that will often give you peace of mind. And finally, I wanna stress that growth controls appetite, not appetite controls growth. So when your child is growing a lot and your brain is secreting hormones telling your body to grow, your child will start eating a lot. When your growth slows down, then your brain will also secrete hormones less, which will also tell your body to eat less and your appetite will slow down. So your appetite does not control your growth. Your growth controls your appetite. So some general rules of thumb as you start solid foods, first of all, no honey until one year of age. There is a very dangerous infection called botulism, which can happen if you give honey to a young, immature baby whose gut is not 
populated with healthy bacteria. After one year of age, honey is not a problem, but under one year of age, there's a lot of open real estate, and if you eat that honey and that bacteria gets into your intestines, it can grow and create a toxin, which can cause a lot of complications and side effects. So under one year of age, no honey. And giving a little bit of like honey-flavored Cheerios, that's not gonna be an issue, but if you're giving straight up honey, for example, the, the kind of honey that you buy uh, at the uh, local farmer's market, that type of honey, you wanna be very careful about. Number two, you don't want to give any, uh, any milk besides breast milk and formula under nine months of age. Typically, America switches to whole milk at one year of age, but there are countries such as Canada and Sweden which, which switch to whole milk at nine months of age, which I think is perfectly acceptable. But under nine months of age, any kind of milk given should be either formula or breast milk because the baby's GI tract is not mature and ready for uh, the other types of milk. And then number, th number three, uh, pacing new foods. A lot of parents only want to start uh, a new food every three to four days, which I think is fine, but that's probably a, a, a lot more cautious and conservative than you need to be. If you want to try several new foods in a day, I think that's totally acceptable. And if your child has an allergic reaction, we're going to often send you to the allergist to get testing done and we can figure out what that allergy is. So I think mixing foods is not that big of a deal. And delineating one food at a time just in case there's an allergic reaction. While it is a conservative and safe way to do things, I don't think it is necessary. And I want to stress, earlier exposure to foods will help reduce allergies. And so you really want to be aggressive and you want the kids to eat as many different things as early as possible. And the study that uh, helped bring this to light was with peanuts. And we now know that if you give peanuts early in life, you can actually reduce the risk of food allergies by tenfold. And we are finding that with other foods as well too. So being aggressive can help reduce the risk of allergies in a child's life. Number five, it may take up to 15 tries before your baby will accept the food. I remember the first time that I had Vietnamese pho, I did not like the flavor. But after the second and third and fourth time, I was hooked. And now I have to have pho at least once a week, and I love it. And babies are the same way. When you give them something new, they may not like it at first, but if you try and try again, you will win that battle, and often they will fall in love with that food. And number six, very important, no sugary drinks. Even fruit juices are not healthy for kids. You do not want to get them stuck on, on sugary drinks early in life because that's an easy way for them to consume a lot of calories, which can lead to obesity in life. Rather than give them fruit drinks, it's much healthier to give them cut up fruit and avoid the sodas, avoid the Starbucks, avoid the sonic drinks, try to avoid those sugary drinks early in life. So allergenic foods. So one of the big things that parents are worried about are allergies, and rightly so, because al food allergies can be scary. But again, I want to stress that if you expose kids to foods early in life, you can help reduce the risk of food allergies. But these are some of the most highly allergenic foods, and these are the foods that you really want to introduce early on. Milk, eggs, soy, wheat, peanuts, tree nuts, shellfish, and fish. But if you do have an allergic reaction, you want to get in touch with your pediatrician as soon as possible to find out what your next step is. And typically an allergic reaction will happen minutes to two hours after you eat the food and you will notice a rash in their facial area and their, in their truncal area. It will be red and often raised and you may see some swelling in their facial area, especially around their mouth. And often because the body does not like the food, it will vomit and reject it. If you see these things, you probably are having a true allergic reaction reaction to the food, you should call your doctor right away and they will probably instruct you to give some Benadryl. And if there are any breathing issues at all and you are worried that your child is getting more and more swollen in this area, you should go ahead and call 911. After this is all resolved, you will often need to see the allergy doctor to get some testing done to figure out what food your child is allergic to. And at home, at school, and in your car as you travel, you always need to carry an EpiPen or an IvyQ so in case there is a reaction at any point. So hopefully, after hearing uh, this bluefish talk, you will know the basics of how to start solid foods, and this will give you some framework as to how, to, to how to do this with your family. Every pediatrician has some great tips and anecdotes that will also help you, so I implore you to talk with your pediatrician, but this should be a great start, and have a lot of fun. This is one of the most exciting times in life, and your baby will truly appreciate the, the, the solid foods that you bring to the table, and the more variety you can give them, the healthier it is, and the healthier they will be. This is Dr. Peter Jung from Bluefish Pediatrics. I hope this was helpful and informative for you.